What's going on guys? This is Mike Noid and today we are going to talk about Skylanders Giants. So for those who don't know, I'm going through all of the mainline Skylander games and we have checked off Skylander Spyro's adventure last month. So now we're going to be looking back at the second Skylander game, Skylanders Giants. Skylanders Spyro's adventure was a huge success. Not only did Activision sell more figures than they expected, but they managed to sell more figures than Star Wars action figures, which were the number one selling action figure line at the time. Activision sold over 30 million figures worldwide. Worldwide. I mean, if that doesn't prompt a sequel, then I, I don't know what does. Activision and Toys for Bob wasted no time. They dropped a sequel about a year after Spyro's Adventure was released, Skylanders Giants. So if you have no clue what makes this game different from the first, let me show you what Toys for Bob did in Photoshop. So giants are brand new toys that are slightly bigger than the standard figures that light up when placed on the portal and have unique abilities that showcase their giant powers. They are able to pull islands, jump through the floor, push heavy blocks, lift barricades, destroy walls, and throw boulders. Their stats are noticeably better, especially their health reaching beyond the 1000 mark. So these are some of the most powerful Skylanders you can add to your collection. Giants cost $14.99 in the US, which makes sense that they were more expensive since they were bigger and lit up. In addition to Giants, they added two more types of figures. There is Series 2 and Lycor figures. Series 2 figures are re-releases of 24 Skylanders that were in Spyro's Adventure. This allowed fans to get another chance to buy characters that they probably missed out on and people who had the previous versions to spend more money. Series 2 figures featured the Skylander in a different pose. Each Series 2 Skylander had their own new attack called a Wow Pal that makes them more powerful or just interesting to use. Some wild pals are really cool while some are just meh. But I admit, it was cool to get one of these Skylanders and see what their new attack was. Lycor figures are just regular sized figures that glowed on the portal when placed, just like the Giants. While it was pretty cool to see a figure like Prism Break light up, I still didn't like these. They were $3 more expensive than the regular figures and didn't come with the WoW Pal if it was a returning Skylander. I mean, yeah, when you put them in a level for the first time, they do damage and the guy goes, but that only works one time for the level. They should have just made light core figures of the 8 Skylanders that didn't make it into the game. I'm not quite sure if Activision ever said why these 8 were not included in the sequel, but I feel like these were just the 8 Skylanders that sold the least of their element. If you were collecting all Spyro's adventure figures back in 2011 and 2012, then you know damn well that Wham Shell was nowhere to be found. I kid you not. I had to buy that sucker on eBay for three times the price. So while these eight Skylanders got the boot, we got eight new Skylanders and four of them were made as Lycor too. What was the point? So when you add up these eight new Skylanders plus the Giants Series 2 and Lycor figures, you have 48 Skylanders to collect. And we haven't even touched the in-game color variants. So I barely mentioned in-game color variations in the Spyro's Adventure video because they weren't that many. You just had the four legendaries and Dark Spyro. Giants is the game where they went more crazy with the color variations. So what is an in-game color variation? An in-game color variation is a Skylander that has a different color palette than its original both on the figure and in the game. I still get comments from people asking me why I don't have the blue bash or the pumpkin eyebrow or the crystal wham shell. Well, you see, those are called chase variants. Chase variants are Skylanders with a different color palette only on the figure. They will still appear with its original colors in the game. I mean, the most you'll get is special above their name in Skylanders Giants, so I guess that's something. There are a good amount of these types of figures from both games, mainly in one solid color like gold, crystal, or glow in the dark, but in some cases they would do something different like the pumpkin eyebrow. Also, if you ever bought a chase variant brand new, then the figures would be at level 5 with 2100 gold, which ensures it wasn't used. But you know, that can be easily manipulated, of course. I'll leave a link to a website called Skylanders Character List in the description where you can see all of the color variations. But one of the ways you can tell the difference between the in-game and chase variants is by the packaging of the figure. If the card matches the figure color, then it's an in-game variant. 
There are 14 in-game color variations, bringing the total to 62 for the figures of Skylanders sequel. So let's go ahead and jump into the starter packs for this game. You have your standard starter packs for the Wii, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the 3DS that were released on October 17th of 2012. A starter pack for the Wii U was released a month later as one of the Wii U's launch titles. For the console versions, buying a starter pack for $75, you get the slightly updated Portal of Power. This portal has a clear ring rather than a green ring on the Spyro's Adventure version. You get the three figures, Tree Rex, Series 2 Cinder, and Jetpack, as well as the cars, stickers, and poster. You might be wondering, does the old portal work with Skylanders Giants? It does, so they actually released a portal owner's pack. These packs got rid of the portal and included just the game and Tree Rex. They also cut Cinder and Jetpack from these packs. What the f***? If you wanted to get Cinder and Jetpack brand new, you had to buy a starter pack. Actually, the best way of buying these two figures without having a second Tree Rex was getting the Skylanders Battleground starter pack. We'll talk more about this game in the video later, but this starter pack came with Cinder and Jetpack, either a regular Double Trouble or its color variation Royal Double Trouble, and the Platinum Chest Magic item. It even cost less than a console starter pack at $50, so there's that. So those are the many different ways you can get started started with playing Skylanders Giants, let's actually discuss the game itself. One feature that they included was a difficulty setting you can choose from easy, medium, and hard. And once you beat the game for the first time, you unlock the Nightmare difficulty. I actually played the game in Nightmare mode to prepare for this video, and let me tell you that you shouldn't take this mode lightly. Mother- Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, man. Alright, you know, that's it. So the game story is pretty similar to the previous game, you have to stop Chaos from taking over Skylands. Chaos's plan involves him getting the Infinity, uh, I mean the Iron Fist of Arcus that would grant him control of all the Archean robots that the Giants defeated 10,000 years prior. You travel with Flynn and Callie in a ship, the Dread Yacht, to each location and you'll get new people on board as you progress. I have to say, I wasn't a fan of the ship because of how small it is compared to the ruins of the first game, but I feel like it actually works since the giants move incredibly slow. I probably would have been frustrated if the hub was any bigger so you know what the ship is fine. There are 16 chapters in this game which is less than the last game but these chapters are longer than the ones in Spyro's adventure. I swear it takes about 20 through 30 minutes to fully explore a level. Also you can still use the adventure packs from the first game and unlock those additional levels. You still have chests, soul gems and hats to find within the levels and even legendary treasures that actually have a purpose use them to customize the ship which was actually pretty nice. You also find the winged sapphires in the levels and even a new item called a Lecotron wheel. These can be equipped in the ship which will grant buffs like getting more health from food and increased damage done on enemies. You can also get buffs from charms. Charms can be earned from buying them from the shops. Bruh this one actually costs 25,000 gold. And a new mode called arena battles. You unlock arena battles from completing chapter 4. You do challenges that mostly involve defeating enemies with a twist. These are actually a lot of fun to do if you aren't playing on nightmare mode. The levels contain pretty much the same sort of obstacles and puzzles that were in the previous game. You even have the gremlin lock puzzles which were refined and move a lot quicker than before. You know what also makes these puzzles quicker? You can buy these keys that allow you to skip these puzzles and racking these up will allow you to just skip these throughout the whole game. Yes, these were nice. A mini game that you can play with characters in each level was introduced called Sky Stones. The rules are pretty simple. Whichever stone has more arrows on its side when placed takes over it and whoever has the most wins. You can get more stones by winning games or buying them from the shops. You can also skip these by buying Skystone Sheets. So the Skylanders now reach to level 15 and can complete quests. Completing quests will grant them 3 ranks, bronze, silver, and gold. You are still able to increase stats of your Skylander by completing heroic challenges and giving them hats and you can still give them nicknames and change ownership. The soul gems that are in the game are only the soul gems of the giant and the eight new Skylanders. All previous Skylanders have access to their Soul Gem upgrade in the game. Skylanders from Skylanders Giants all have an orange base at the bottom of the figure. All Skylanders from Spyro's Adventure work in Giants. Even the eight that didn't get re-releases, you can still use Skylanders from future games as long as they were in Giants. 
So there weren't any adventure packs for Skylanders Giants, probably because you can still use the old ones. Instead, they released two different battle packs which included two figures and a magic item, which not only lights up, but will unlock a new battle arena for two player mode. Battle mode is just about the same from last time, but they did add a new mode called Ring Out where you have to knock your opponent off the stage. <laughs> Kind of like Smash Bros. Also, you can still do two players in story mode, which is great. So I'm not going to talk about every Skylander, but I will mention my favorites from this game. Tree Rex may be a basic choice, but he's still my favorite giant. He allows for far and close range attacks and can sprint to make him move faster. I say my second favorite giant has to be Swarm for just about the same reasons, but he, he flies, which makes him go faster. Crusher deserves a mention as well because of his ability to separate into smaller rocks. Oh, so that's where I heard Rubble Trouble from. Pop Fizz is my favorite out of the new Skylanders. Choosing three different types of potions make him best suited for different scenarios. Fright Rider is great as well. He's probably the most unique Skylander out there. I mean, the man is riding a dead ostrich. I mean, that's just, that's just plain sick. Hex has one of the most powerful WoW pals from the Series 2 Skylanders. She can conjure up a giant skull that does like 280 damage. Jesus. Trigger Happy can unleash a gigantic laser beam while using the machine gun until you get, just get bored. This wasn't really all that strong, but Wrecking Ball turns into a disco ball when he rolls, which I thought looked pretty cool. And Sonic Boom can do this with her babies. So let's go ahead and talk about the 3DS version and other Skylander games. The 3DS starter pack came with Tree Rex, Cinder, and Punch Pop Fizz. The 3DS game is similar to previous games. The levels just have a few spots only giants can get to that regular Skylanders can't. Instead of Chaos, the villain is Captain Frightbeard who's trying to take over Skylands. The game actually lets you choose playing the levels normally or time challenge, which was a complaint I had for the first game. So I thought that was pretty cool that they fixed that. But yeah, you get the same platforming style just like before. So due to the popularity of the Skylanders games, we got a variety of spin off games that work with your Skylanders collection. Skylanders Spyro's Universe or Skylanders Universe was an online RPG that used your Skylander collection as well. I probably should have talked about this in the Spyro's Adventure video since this released alongside that game, but it also supported Skylanders Giants figures so it still makes sense to mention here. Skylanders Cloud Patrol was an arcade shooter game for iOS devices that released on April 5th of 2012. I didn't play much of this one, but I thought it was okay at best. Skylanders Lost Island is like Farmville and Dragon City. It's an app that allows you to build a village on your own island and have your Skylanders protect the residents. This was released on October 6th of 2012 on Apple devices and then Android a little over a year later. This was actually pretty fun to come back to every day to maintain the island. I actually missed this game. They actually supported this game all the way up to Trap Team which was pretty surprising. Skylanders Battlegrounds which I mentioned had a starter pack. It was about defeating Chaos's warlords by using Skylanders to fight enemies in Battlegrounds and swiping them to attack and gain experience. I didn't play a lot of this either but it was good for a fun game. It was cool to have a Bluetooth portal to use and swap out Skylanders like the base games though. So those were all the spin-off games and oh by the way, all of these games are unplayable now so yeah. Just like Spyro's Adventure, Skylanders Giants hit me with waves of nostalgia. While I do see Giants as a better game with all the additions and improvements, the game feels like more of an expansion of Spyro's Adventure than a proper sequel. I mean these games look and feel extremely similar, almost the same even. But despite that, Skylanders Giants is still a great Skylanders game. If you want to 100% complete Skylanders Giants, you will need one Skylander from each element in order to get inside the elemental gates and at least one of those a a giant so you can get to areas only giants can get to due to their strength and size also if you manage to beat the game on nightmare mode you get an after credit scene with the chompies and the iron fist which i actually never knew about until making this video well that's going to be it for today's video let me know which skylander from skylanders giants is your favorite down in the comments below thank you guys for watching and of course i will see you guys in the next one take care bro these enemies got superman strength they, they should have been the real villains of the game